Hi, welcome to New Flavor Physics in LHCB Data. So recently, there have been several particle physics measurements related to lepton flavor, which have possibly hinted at disagreement with the expectation of the standard model. The most famous of these is muon G-2, but there are a bunch of them. Now, we will try to summarize the status of these various measurements in a separate video, but here we're just going to look at two of these quantities, called RK and RK star. These have been recently measured by an experiment at CERN called LHCB. Now, typically, particle physicists don't declare discovery until some observation disagrees with the standard model prediction by at least 5 sigma. And the observations that we're going to discuss here do not reach this threshold or even come anywhere close. But there is starting to be speculation that the various experimental hints in the flavor sector are coming from a common source. And so these results are being taken a bit more seriously than they otherwise would be. Now, RK and RK star are two of the experimentally cleanest observables that are generating interest, so we're going to talk about those. Now, I should note that we're going to leave out a lot of the technical details of what the experiment does. This is just an overview. So the results given in this video are taken from these two papers, which you can take a look at if you wish. Okay. So let's start by briefly talking about flavor in the standard model. So in the standard model, we have six quarks and six leptons, and these interact with each other through the gauge bosons, the photon, the Z, the W plus and minus, and the gluons. Okay, so in the standard model, we have six quarks and six leptons. These are arranged into three families. These families are identical except for the quark and lepton masses. These three families have the same interactions with the gauge bosons. And flavor just refers to the type of quark or lepton that you're talking about. So an electron or a muon or a tau, etc. Now here's a question, why are there three families of almost identical particles? Well, we don't know. In fact, that's a question we'd really like to know the answer to. So in the standard model, the three generations of quarks and leptons have the same interactions with the gauge bosons. If we see particle physics processes where the three generations interact differently, except for differences caused by mass terms. That's a sign of physics beyond the standard model. Also, when referring to the leptons, electron, muon, and tau, the fact that they have the same interactions is often referred to as lepton universality. The measurements discussed here are looking for violations of lepton universality. Okay, so as we said, there are six quarks and six leptons, but there's something that we need to mention about the quarks. We don't actually see free quarks in nature. Instead, quarks are bound by the strong force into particles called hadrons. The hadrons primarily come in two types, mesons and baryons. Mesons will be important for what we're discussing here. Okay, so with that, let's talk about RK and RK star. In fact, let's start with RK. So let's talk about a meson called the B+. LHCB looks at the B+, and also its antiparticle, the B-. But to keep the discussion simple, let's just talk about the B plus here. So the B plus is a meson that contains a U quark and a B antiquark. 
Now this meson is going to decay. And on rare occasions, this B plus meson decays to a K plus and a lepton pair. Now a K plus is a meson that contains a U quark and an S antiquark. So here we show the B plus decaying to a K plus and an E plus E minus pair. But it can also decay to a K plus and a mu plus mu minus pair. So we said that the B plus was made of a B antiquark and a U quark. And the K plus is made of an S antiquark and a U quark. So when this decay occurs, Basically, a B antiquark is changing into an S antiquark, and the up quark is basically going along for the ride. And additionally, a lepton pair, either an E plus E minus pair or a mu plus mu minus pair, is spit out. Now, these decays involve both quarks and leptons, and so we could ask questions about quark or lepton flavor in these observables. But for our K, what we're mostly interested in is the lepton flavor. Okay, so LHCb looks at these two decays, where a B plus goes to a K plus and either an E plus E minus pair or a mu plus mu minus pair. Now in each of these processes, we have a B plus transitioning to a K plus. Calculations of observables involving hadrons, so involving baryons or mesons, are extremely difficult to get right. So this part of the calculation would be tricky. However, there is something concrete that we can say about the emission of the lepton pair. So about the emission of the E plus E minus or mu plus mu minus pair. And that's that in the standard model, the same physics leads to these two processes. This is, in fact, an example of lepton universality in the standard model. And that means that in the standard model, the two processes, B plus goes to K plus E plus E minus, and B plus goes to K plus mu plus mu minus, should happen at the same rate except for small effects coming from the difference of the electron and muon masses, and there are calculations of that difference. So, to look for evidence of flavor violation in the lepton sector, let's take the following ratio. Let's take the ratio of the branching fraction of B plus goes to K plus mu plus mu minus over the branching fraction of B plus goes to K plus E plus E minus. Now here the branching ratio or branching fraction is just the fraction of the time that the B plus decays to that particular final state. And the individual branching fractions are tricky to calculate in the standard model, but this ratio of branching fractions should be very close to one. Now, this ratio that we've just written down is almost RK. In fact, if there were no experimental uncertainties, this ratio would be RK. The definition of RK is slightly more complicated because of experimental issues. But for the moment, let's take this as our definition of RK. So here I've written RK is equal to, sorta kinda, the ratio that we just wrote down. We will show how this definition changes when we talk about what LHCb actually did. Now, in the standard model, these two branching fractions are actually very small numbers. And that means if they receive contributions from physics beyond the standard model, those new physics contributions may be large compared to the small standard model contribution. 
and new physics contributions that change these numbers and favor one process over the other, so favor muons over electrons or electrons over muons, can therefore have a large effect on this ratio that we just wrote down. So new physics can make this ratio deviate substantially from one, and that's why looking at this ratio is a good idea if you're interested in looking for signs of new physics. Okay, so now let's briefly talk about RK star. Okay, so to talk about RK star, we're going to talk about a meson called the B naught. So the B naught is a meson containing a D quark and a B anti quark. This B naught meson occasionally decays to a lepton pair and a meson called a K star. Now, this K star is a meson containing a D quark and an S antiquark. So, since the B naught meson consists of a B antiquark and a D quark, and the K star consists of an S antiquark and a D quark, this decay, just like the one that we already looked at, involves a transition of a B antiquark to an S antiquark and the emission of a lepton pair. So this is the same transition as what we looked at for RK. So let's take the analogous definition as we did for RK. So here we're writing down that RK star is again, sorta kinda, equal to the ratio of these two branching fractions, where the branching fraction involving muons is on top and the branching fraction involving an E plus E minus pair is on the bottom. And again, we will give the correct definition shortly. And again, in the standard model, this ratio should be very close to one. Okay, so with that, let's actually talk about what LHCB does. So LHCb is one of the experiments at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. It's an experiment built specifically to study physics of the B quark and a phenomenon known as CP violation. Here we'll mainly talk about LHCb's measurement of RK. We'll briefly mention some differences between the measurements of RK and RK star afterwards. Okay. So, the LHCb experiment collides protons. And occasionally, a collision produces a B plus or a B minus meson. Here, we'll just look at the B plus. The B plus typically travels some measurable distance before it decays. And LHCb looks for a K plus along with an E plus E minus pair or a mu plus mu minus pair that results from the decay of the B meson. Okay, so LHCB wants to measure RK. And we said that RK is something like this ratio of branching ratios, where in the numerator we have the branching ratio of B plus goes to K plus mu plus mu minus and in the denominator we have the branching ratio of B plus goes to K plus E plus E minus. And if there were no measurement errors, this ratio would in fact be RK. However, experiments aren't perfect, and muons and electrons are actually detected using different methods. So what happens if you're better at detecting and identifying E plus E minus pairs than you are at detecting mu plus mu minus pairs, or vice versa? What happens if your detector or your analysis is better at seeing one than the other? If you don't take this into account, you're going to screw up the measurement of the ratio that we just wrote down. Luckily, there's another useful way that this B plus meson can decay. The B plus meson can also decay to a K plus meson, like we saw before, 
plus another meson called a J psi particle. This J psi particle can then decay to an E plus E minus pair or a mu plus mu minus pair. And if this process happens using the J psi, that lepton pair will have a mass compatible with the mass of the J psi meson. And so, except for the lepton pair mass, this process that goes through a J psi looks exactly like the processes that we are interested in in order to measure RK. Now, the leptonic branching fractions of the J psi are experimentally known to be nearly equal to a good precision. So here we have the branching fractions of a J psi going to either E plus E minus or mu plus mu minus, and they're within errors of each other. So experimentally, one could measure the ratio of the branching fraction of a B plus going to a K plus J psi, where the J psi then goes to mu plus mu minus, to the branching fraction of the B plus goes to K plus J psi, where the J psi then goes to E plus E minus. And because the branching fractions of the J psi to E plus E minus and mu plus mu minus are known to be very nearly equal to each other, the true value of this ratio should be very, very close to one. But, if you're better at detecting and identifying E plus E minus pairs than you are at detecting mu plus mu minus pairs, or vice versa, and you measure that ratio, you might get something that differs substantially from one because of your measurement errors. As long as your ability to detect E plus E minus and mu plus mu minus pairs doesn't depend much on the mass of that lepton pair, any differences in detection efficiencies between E plus E minus pairs and mu plus mu minus pairs should be the same for the decays that go through a J psi as they are for the decays used in the processes that we're interested in for measuring RK. So here's the definition of RK actually used by LHCB. It's a ratio of ratios. So RK is equal to the following expression. On top, we have the ratio that we wrote down earlier, this ratio of branching fractions involving either mu plus, mu minus, or E plus, E minus pairs. On the bottom, we have the analogous ratio, but for the process where the B plus decays through a J psi and then the J psi decays either to a mu plus mu minus pair or an E plus E minus pair. So the top ratio is the RK expression that we wrote down earlier. And the bottom ratio cancels a lot of systematic uncertainties that can show up in the numerator. This double ratio allows LHCB to reduce systematic uncertainties in their measurement. Okay, so that was what they do for RK. The situation with RK star is similar, but there are two differences between RK star and RK that we'll mention. Okay, so the measurement of RK star looks at the decays of a B naught going to a K star and a lepton pair. And here the K star is specifically the K star 892. And the K star 892 itself decays in the detector. So the decay chain is slightly more complicated than that used in the case of RK. Second, LHCB actually does two different measurements of RK star. They do separate measurements depending on the mass of the lepton pair, so the mass of the E plus E minus or mu plus mu minus pair. They have a low mass measurement where the mass of the lepton pair is between 0.21 and 1.05 GeV, 
and they have a high mass measurement where the mass of the lepton pair is between 1.05 GeV and 2.45 GeV. Here we've just stated those numbers again, but it's important to know that 0.21 GeV is the minimum mass needed to produce a mu plus mu minus pair. So for the low mass region, the difference in the muon and electron mass actually does make the standard model prediction for RK star differ substantially from one. In fact, it's about 0.92. Okay, so here are the results from LHCB for RK and RK star. And you can take a look at the numbers at your leisure, but we'll point out two things. One is all three measurements have come out less than one, and the significance of these measurements ranges between 2.1 and 3.1 sigma. We should point out that the uncertainties given are broken down into statistical and systematic uncertainties, and in the case of RK star, the range of the significance reflects the choice of the standard model prediction used. So there are slightly different predictions coming from different analyses of what the value of RK star should be in the standard model. Now these significances aren't very large, but it is interesting to note that they are all looking at the same B antiquark to S antiquark plus lepton pair transition, and they've all come out a bit low, so they're all a bit lower than what would be expected in the standard model. Okay, so let's briefly summarize. So here we've seen the results of recent measurements of two flavor observables by the LHCB collaboration. RK and RK star are particularly clean observables to measure due to the double ratio method that LHCB uses. These results show small deviations from the standard model expectation. And while the statistical significance is still small, the results are all pointing in the same direction. Additionally, these results are accompanied by interesting deviations in other measurements that we haven't talked about here. Right now, it's too early to tell if we're seeing the first hints of flavor physics beyond the standard model, or if these are just statistical fluctuations that will go away in time.